oftentimes I get asked how I store the cards in my collection. So in this video I'm going to go over how I store my cards, as well as show you some of the products I use now and have used in the past. This isn't the only way to hold your collection, it's just a way that works best for me, and a few products that I've tried along the way. So this is the bookshelf that holds my collection. Each set has its own one inch binder, and I've printed out the set symbol, the set number, and the set logo on the spine of each binder. Not all these sets are complete. Some of them um, range from having just a couple of cards in the binder to having the set being 100% complete. Um, I found that having the symbol on there to be super helpful when I'm pulling away cards from a trade or cards that I've purchased. It's really easy to just match up the symbol from the card and pull out that binder. Um, also, it's really nice having each set's logo on there. I think it looks really nice and is also a quick way for me to identify which binder I need to grab. Um, having the numbers is also very, very nice, especially if I pull out a lot of binders. That way I can put them back really, really quickly. And then up on the top shelf, I have a few larger binders. They hold some of the promo sets like the Black Star promos, trainer kits, oversized cards, and other cards I keep as a side collection. And that funky looking binder in the middle there is my Southern Islands collection. Um, that uh, mini set came with its own binder, um, so that's why I keep that one. I think it looks really cool. So now I'm going to show you a few of the products that I use. So first I want to talk about binders and different kinds I've tried. As you saw on my bookshelf, I've chosen to use the Avery 1-inch binders, one for each set of my collection. I like the white binder because it allows me to print the side of the binder and it kind of looks like it belongs on the binder, whereas on a different color binder, the white paper would really stick out. And I do also use different color binders for different things. For example, my trades are in a different color binder or my side collections. I also prefer to use binders because you can always add additional pages to them and use pages of different sizes. They also stand up really, really well on their own. But I have used other methods in the past, so I thought I'd show you those as well. On the left is a Monster Protector binder. On the right is an Ultra Pro Pro binder. And they're both made in different colors by these companies. Ultra Pro also makes Pokemon designs, um, and they usually make one for each set. So there's a black and white one, and here's one from Noble Victories. Um, the ones I have here are four pocket pages, um, but there are also nine pocket versions available. I just don't have any to show you. Overall, I do like these kinds of binders because they're really, really easy to carry around. And they're really, really thin. Um, the pages are also attached, so you can't really lose a page, whereas if you drop a binder and the rings open up, the pages can fall out. But the downfall is you also can't add any pages to it. And with sets being different sizes, and since I collect both the reverse and the regular set, I can't always fit an entire set in one of these binders. Also, since the pages are attached, if you decide to move a few of the cards, for example, if you want to move your ultra rares from the back of the set to the front, you have to move every single card in this binder. Whereas in a ring binder, you can just move that entire page. So anyway, let's take a look at this um, inside these. So first is the Ultra Pro binder with the Pokemon designs. These have clear pages that load from the top. And what I mean by top loading is when you take the card to put it in, you load it from the top. So this is kind of a really bad thing for me. I really don't like that because if I take this binder and I accidentally drop it, all the cards can come spilling out. And I've seen people just have a couple of cards and you know, this happens in your, um, book bag and then you fold this over and all of a sudden you've got bent cards at the top. I've also seen them completely come spilling out and have to pick up a ton of cards so that's kind of a downfall. Another thing I'm not a big fan of is these clear pages. Um, I really do prefer black pages because I think that they um, show the set a lot better than the clear pages. But anyway there's 10 pages in these so the four pocket versions can store 40 cards if you just put them on the front or they can store 80 cards if you put them on back and front like this. But keep in mind, if you do put them back and front, you can't take them out from this side. You have to take them out from this side, which can be kind of annoying because now you have to take out, you know, and touch this front card just to move the back one. Um, the nine pocket versions of these can store uh, 90 cards single-sided or 180 if you load them from the front and the back. Now onto the other ones. Both the Monster Protector and the Ultra Pro Binder feature black pages, which for me is a big, big plus. I just really, really think that looks cool um, in terms of the Pokemon being on black pages. So there's those two. Um, more importantly, they have side loading pockets. So if I wanted to move this card or add it to my collection, I load it from the side. This has a couple of benefits. One, most importantly, they're not gonna come falling out if I drop the binder. And also, if you see, 
these pockets are from different sides too. So e even if a couple of them were to spill out, it wouldn't be the entire binder. Um, another benefit it has is when I put this card in here and it's in a sleeve, now it's completely sealed off too. There's no dirt coming in from the top. Um, if you were to maybe have the opening be towards the top and a top loading page. But anyway, I really, really like having the side loading and I really, really like having the black. Another um, plus is both of these binders. Um, you can see them here. They've kind of got these bumps and this ribbing. And here is the one on the Ultra Pro. These are really, really nice because if you're carrying these cards around, um, they're less likely to slip out. However, if you don't use sleeves and you're just going to be putting a regular card in, if you're not careful and, and you're just sliding them all the time, as you can hear that noise, basically what can happen, um, and I'm, you're not going to see it just here yet, but you can eventually get a lot of edge wear on these cards just from hitting those bumps. So you do have to be careful with that if you're not going to be using sleeves. Each of these has 20 pages um, and they load from both the front and the back so that way you can take out these cards from the front or the back of the page. Um, and they can store up to 360 cards if you're storing them front and back. And these pages allow you to remove the cards from the front of the page and the back of the page, um, unlike the clear ones where you have to move it from the front if you want to remove the card in the back. So I'll talk about card sleeves in a little bit, um, but I want to talk about the difference in these two binders. So the Ultra Pro Pro binder has this band. It's right here on the back. It's kind of nice because if you're going to be traveling around, what you can do is move this band and secure your collection a little bit better so your pages aren't opening up. However, in the eyes of a collector, if you're going to be storing this binder on a shelf, this band can get snapped with another binder and can start damaging the cards inside this binder because it basically went inside there. Um, quality wise. I usually am a really really big fan of Ultra Pro however in terms of these kinds of binders I really think the Monster Binder is a much better quality product. Um, there's a couple of things that make me say that. First of all I think the plastic is a lot clearer in the Monster ones than it is in the Ultra Pro ones. Both of these binders have been used extensively by me and as you can see here you're starting to get scuffing on the Ultra Pro um, plastic whereas I don't see any of that on any of the pages in the Monster Binder. Another thing um, in terms of quality is the, um, the Monster Binder pages look really, really neat. They've got these really, really crisp edges um, and they're rounded, whereas on the Ultra Pro Binder, you can almost kind of see fraying of the plastic. Um, it's a square cut and it's just a little different. And on the Monster Binder, uh, you don't have that sewing look, um, basically, these are just straight lines. There's no sewing on the sides. Whereas here you can see that sewing stitching all around. And basically that just means you can, you know, pry at these. And eventually cards can get stuck there, dirt can get stuck there. Whereas on here it's not as easy. Um, the price difference between the two um, is about $5. I want to say the, the Monster Binder is usually about $25 and the Ultra Pro Binder is about 20. However, I've purchased this Monster Protector Binder for 20 as well, so I'm sure you can probably find them at very similar prices. Um, in terms of the Pokemon Binders, the four pocket ones um, manufacturer suggest a retail, I think is seven, and for the nine pocket ones is about $9. So um, Ultra Pro also makes a binder that's just like this, and it just has leather on the outside. Um, I it's obviously more expensive because of the leather. I personally think it's just too thick to really be considered for collection storage. And obviously it's more expensive, so why would you want to really spend on that? Um, whereas the Avery 1-inch binders are around $3 each, which makes it a more affordable option. But keep in mind you still have to buy pages to go inside these binders, so that price in terms of your collection is going to go up. So uh, next is going to be us looking at pages. The pages I like to use for my collection are Ultra Pro Premium Series Side Load 18 Pocket Pages in Black. They do also make these in clear if you do prefer not to have the black background. So these are similar to the pages in the Ultra Pro Pro Binder with a couple of uh, differences. Obviously they are three hole punch so you can put them into a ring binder. Um, but more notably, uh, on the black part of the um, page. There's no bumps like there are in the Pro Binder. And 
I mean, that is a little bit of a downfall because the cards can fall out a lot easier, but it's not such a big deal for me, especially with a collection, because it's not going to be moved around as much as tradable cards, so they're not going to come flying out. Um, I'm not really moving the collection around. It kind of just stays in my um, bookshelf. But um, on the bright side, you don't really have that potential for damage when you're sliding the cards inside. So um, I also like the plastic of these a lot better. Um, it's clearer, I think, than the plastic on the Pro Binders, and it doesn't scuff as easily. Um, in fact, I've used these pages for a couple months now, um, and I haven't noticed any of that scuffing, whereas the ones in the Pro Binder, the scuffing is pretty noticeable right away. The downside is these pages are a bit flimsier. So what I mean by that is they fold really, really easily on themselves. Um, a lot of times I'll find pages like this inside my collection just because it folded or maybe even just like that. Um, it's not such a big deal for me because they do fold also only on the lines where there's no cards, so it's not any potential damage for the cards, but it can be just a little bit annoying. Um, also, unlike clear pages, and here I have a clear page for an example, you load cards from both sides. So if I want to remove the card on the back of the page, I just go to the back and I can pull it out. Whereas if I wanted to remove this card from the back, I have to flip it upside down and pretty much be pulling out both cards just to get at that one card, which can potentially cause damage for the front card. So I like it for that reason. I also like the black. I really think it just shows off the collection a little bit better than seeing it on a clear. Now, I know you're looking at a black, um, surface but for example if there was a piece of paper behind this I just think it looks better on the black than um, it does in the clear pages especially also you can kind of see sometimes the back of another card coming out and it just kind of looks a little bit weird so for cost wise these um, this box of 50 pages costs $25 so that boils down to 50 cents a page so for 20 pages, um, which is what's inside the Ultra Pro Binders, it's $10. So it's about half the cost of that Pro Binder. And I generally need about eight, 12 to 18 pages for each set, depending on the set size of these. Um, so in the past, I have used the clear sleeves, and these specific um, clear sleeve pages are called the Ultra Pro Platinum Series. Um, they're a little bit less expensive. Um, I, they are also, I think, a little sturdier. They don't fold on themselves so much like these black ones do. So they're definitely an option. Um, however, obviously, like I mentioned, you can't load from the back of the page. You pretty much have to flip it over and move both cards. And um, they obviously can spill out really easily because they're top loading. But like I said, they're less expensive. They're about half the price of the black pages, um, and they're about 25 cents a page, whereas the black pages are about 50 cents a page. Um, Ultra Pro also does make, um, like I mentioned, these um, side loading pages in clear if you prefer not to have that black background. And I think they're about the same price as the regular clear pages, about 25 cents each. Um, however, you can't load from the front and the back, just from the front and the clear pages. There's also two other types of pages I've used, and I'm going to kind of move things over just so I could show you those. The first one is the Ultra Pro Platinum Series 4 Pocket Page, and it has four pockets, and what I use these pages for is to store a booster pack art. So if I have a booster pack and I want to show it off, because um, I keep them for each set, I just put them inside these four pocket pages. There's also a three pocket Ultra Pro Platinum Series page and what I use these for is the um, blisters um, that you can buy at Fred Meyers, uh, Walmart, Target, stores like that um, and they just fit really well. I only could fit two because the, they kind of stick out a little bit so I usually put one in the other and I'll show you that when I show you my collection. And the last type of page that I do use for my collection is the Ultra Pro Platinum Series one pocket page. And what I use these for is the uh, oversized cards, basically. They fit in here. They're, they do kind of move around a little bit in here, so I don't kind of like that, but I haven't been able to find a better page for those large promos. So next we're gonna take a look at some sleeves. Now on to sleeves. Now I do want to mention that it is possible and absolutely acceptable to store your cards just inside the pages. However, because each pocket is an opening for the card to be put inside, that is also an opening for dirt, dust, and worst of all moisture like humidity from the air to get inside and ruin your cards even though you think you have them well protected. 
Also, if you ever drop your binder and your cards come spilling out, if they're in a sleeve, they're better protected. For this reason, I store all my cards in sleeves and then inside pages. So here are a few good sleeve options. I use and prefer the Ultra Pro Deck Protector Sleeves in Clear. Um, those are the ones all the way to the left here. And if you are going to be getting these, uh, make sure you just get them in standard size. That is the size for Pokemon cards. The smaller sizes are for Yu-Gi-Oh cards. They price-wise are about $3 for 50 sleeves, and you can also get them in a double pack of 100 sleeves, but basically boils down to about six cents a sleeve. So these sleeves have this little holographic emblem on the bottom there, and that can get in the way of your cards. So what I usually do is if I'm looking at the emblem, I flip it around to the side that's a little less holographic, and if the opening's at the top, I actually put in my cards upside down like that. And the reason I do that is if I now take this card and put it inside a page, the top is closed off so if there was any dirt or dust to get in it just sits at the top here. Whereas if you had your card in this way, dirt could get in through that opening. So Ultra Pro makes these deck protector sleeves in different colors. Um, and some people do prefer to store them in black. Uh, since I already use black pages, that's not necessary for me. But these are, for example, here is a blue and a white version. Um, these are more so used for decks. If you were to put your card inside, obviously that little emblem's in the way. And if you wanted to put it in upside down just to give it some more protection, now that emblem is in the way of the Pokemon name. So that could be a little bit annoying. Hence, I use the ones that are clear. Now, if that little marker, a little Ultra Pro marker gets to be a bit annoying, there is another option, and Dragon Shield would be it. Um, they don't have that little dot that Ultra Pro sleeves have, but um, as you can notice, when you first take the sleeve out, it's a little bit curved, and that kind of bothers me a little bit. Once you do put the card inside, that curvature goes away. Can't really see it anymore. So it's not really necessarily going to ruin your cards, but I just feel like the ends are kind of curved in on these. Um, I do feel that they're a better quality plastic. It's definitely a lot clearer of a card when I put it inside a Dragon Shield um, sleeve than it is inside the Ultra Pro sleeve. I think this plastic is just a little bit um, dimmer. Uh, however, they are more expensive. So you do get this box that they come in, um, which you can use as a deck box. It even has some area to write on there. But they are about $10 for a pack of 100, and they do also come in different colors too. So that's about 10 cents a sleeve. And I know that kind of just sounds a little weird because it's only a couple of cent difference, this being six cents and this one being 10 cents. Um, and you could see that difference in clarity. I mean, looking at chest pin through those is, is very different. But when you buy 100 sleeves, the difference be price difference between these two is, these are $4 more expensive for the Dragon Shield. So I personally stick with the Ultra Pro, um, and the Dragon Shield can be kind of harder to find sometimes too, um, unless you have a nice gaming store near you. There are also sleeves that are commonly referred to as penny sleeves. That's because they pretty much cost pennies each, um, and they're very inexpensive. Um, they're great sleeves to use when you're sending in a trade, or you might get them around a card when you buy a card. Uh, they're a bit flimsy when you try to use them to store your collection. And that would be these two on the right. I mean, you can very easily fold them, whereas these, I mean, they're foldable, but they spring back, whereas these just automatically do that. So the true penny sleeves are these, the ones all the way to the right. They're just called Ultra Pro Sleeve Series Card Sleeves. And they cost about a dollar for a hundred, so basically about a penny each. They are great for protecting a card from scratches if you're moving around a lot or mailing it. However, they don't fit well into a clear page and often they don't fit well into the side loading pages either. So here's my Pikachu card. I put it inside this penny sleeve. If I were to now take my page and try to put this inside, I can get it to go inside, yes. But you can see it kind of bends inside there and now also, there's an opening. If I were to try to put it in upside down, it's, you know, it's very hard to actually get the card to go in upside down. You could kind of work it in there, but it would be hard. In terms of a side loading page, sometimes they'll fit and sometimes they will crinkle like that at the top there. So, there's a way around this as well. 
there's something called premium card sleeves. These are about $2 for 100 or about two pennies per sleeve. Um, and they are cut, even it says here consistent sizing, they're cut more consistently so they all are about the same size. And because of that, they fit well into a top loading page. So if you wanted to have a sleeve but you didn't want to spend a lot more money like on a deck protector sleeve, you could buy these premium card sleeves. And for example, here's a side loading page. They do still kind of bend over on those. And from a top loading page perspective, these will go in and not have that bend because they're less wide. But you will still have that problem of having the top being open and dirt potentially getting in there. Unless you try to flip it upside down and really work it into that page, which is possible. It just takes a lot of work. There's a couple of other additional sleeve options that I, I don't personally use, but I thought I'd mention. And those are these here. So the Ultra Pro Fit sleeves, which are the ones on the right side, they are really, really tight, tight sleeves. Um, very similar to the premium sleeves. They just have a little bit, like a little bit smaller to, than those. These you really have to work the card to get inside. As you can see, it just fits. Let me get, fix the uh, focus there. It, the card just fits inside. So when you see them in these, it almost looks like the card's not even in a sleeve. It's just a perfect fit. You can also always put the card in upside down. And now you would have absolutely no problem putting these inside a page. They are obviously flimsier than the deck protector sleeves, and they're about the same price. They're three dollars, um, excuse me, for a hundred, so about half the price. So these are also a good option for storing. What these are really made for is for you to sleeve your card like that and then put it inside a deck protector sleeve. That way your card is completely protected. Now, if I were to use this card in a deck and I was shuffling, both the top of the card is protected and the bottom of the card is protected. The third option here is something called the Ultra Pro Deck Protector Sleeve Cover. I only recently discovered these. I didn't even know they made them. Um, I think they're kind of interesting, but basically what they're made to do is now take that deck protector sleeve and put it inside. Oh, I grabbed the wrong one. It's this one. So now you've essentially got three sleeves around that card, which I think is a little bit excessive, but I could see if you're maybe building a deck and playing with like a full art Charizard EX and you don't want it to get damaged, that would absolutely protect the card completely. Um, anyway, their price is about the same as the uh, duck protector sleeve themselves. It's about $3 for 50. So it, it could get kind of expensive if you're gonna be putting in three different sleeves for a card. So essentially, if you wanted to use all their products, you would use the Profit sleeve to put your very valuable Pikachu in, the Deck Protector sleeve, and then the Deck Protector sleeve cover. Lots and lots of stuff. All right, so next I wanna show you what this all looks like in my collection. To recap, I wanted to show you how I store my collection. So I use Avery one inch binders for each set and I have this printed on the spine of the binder. Each set gets its own binder. I try to keep the booster box folded on the side pocket. I then use three pocket pages and this top pocket is just emptied. And I use that to store the blisters that the new cards come in. I think the last couple sets have been made this way. I then use the four pocket pages to store one of each pack art. And I use the one pocket page for oversized promos. I then use the side loading 18 pocket pages in black from Ultra Pro. And I put each card into an Ultra Pro deck protector sleeve first. And that's the ones with the little emblem on the back. And then they get placed inside the page. And I pretty much store my collection in terms of regulars, might be a couple cards I'm missing here or there. My ultra rares are stored the same way, and then my reverses are stored the exact same way as well. 
So I know I showed a lot of different products in this video and I hope they give you some kind of idea of what you can use to store your collection. I don't claim that my way is the right way to store a collection, it's simply my way and it works for me. And I'm always looking for ideas on how other people store their collections, so if you have any ideas and you want to share, leave me a comment below or make a video response showing how you store your collection. Hope this video is helpful. See you guys!